The 10-Minute Drill. This is a big one. It's brought to you by All Pro Roofing. AllProRoofingLLC.com on 1010XL. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Hit it. All right, sports concepts and rationalizations, we do it each and every day, except on Tuesday at the end of the 10-minute drill, we will hand out a prize pack. Beef, today's prize pack includes... Uh, Dan, today we've got Carolina on our minds, Dan, as we're going to head down to the arena Saturday night for James Taylor and his all-star band Mm. at the Vistar Veterans Memorial Arena Saturday night. That's November 13th, 7.30, and you'll get a pair of tickets. Just stay tuned. We'll be doing that giveaway at the end of this here 10-minute drill. That is an excellent giveaway. I love me some JT. Me Uh, too. Listen... Uh, the best studio show going is the NBA one with, and this is no surprise, but they, every time I flip it on, those guys crack me up. And <laughs> they did a funny bit last night uh, after they talked about, by the way, Jokic and Morris. Mm-hmm. And both Charles and Shaq said Jokic 100%. You know, that they both, Jokic got mean? suspended a game. Yeah. Morris only got fined 50 grand. Mm-hmm. So Charles is like, Jokic losing like 300 grand. That ain't fair. He goes, he, Morris took a shot at him. He did take a cheap he, shot. He said just, he took a shot right back. Yeah, and, and a lot. It's it's. And he goes, "That's that's cool. They both should be. It should be the same as what he I'm was." I'm somewhat saying. surprised. That seems to be almost everyone's opinion. Yeah. Now look, there's also this. The Morrises are you know stirs. Yeah. That's what they do. Oh, They're yeah. dirty, chippy yeah. players. Yeah. So that matters. Well, it escalated too on on social media as the Jokic brothers were ready to throw down with the Morris brothers. Apparently, they're our Jokic brothers. That wouldn't go well for the Morses. Yeah. I feel like the Jokic's are some like some sort of like behind some iron curtain somewhere. You could hit them in the head with a shovel and they would just like snarl at you. Well, anyway, so those two sides are it's it's a lot like the McCoys and the Hatfields, oh, quite frankly. Well, except they don't live next door to each but other. But anyway, after that, somebody <laughs> put on Twitter, uh, 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 they caught Shaq at the like sip and go. All right. Okay. And so they, hey, great thing. Look who we ran into at the sip and go. And he's such a nice guy. He took time to take a picture with my son, the soccer player. And it's Shaq and, and, the, and the soccer player. Okay. Well, one of the boys <laughs> noticed in what Shaq had in his hands. Okay. So they zoom in on, on his, what he's gone into the sip and go for. Okay. <laughs> so Shaq has a honey bun. Nice. So, yeah, nice. He, Shaq needs about 10 of those, and, I think, to make one. And Chuck's like, wait a minute. Is that a honey bun? Ain't nothing wrong with a honey bun. And, and so Shaq's kind of giggling, and he's like, yeah. And then Ernie, Ernie goes, does a deeper dive into the picture, and underneath the honey bun, Shaq also has those little coconut donuts. <laughs> he's the one, huh? I like so the little puffs on Chuck's almost. like, man, I love them coconut donuts. Oh, yeah, I see the cake donuts. Yeah. The, like the coconut syrup <laughs> kind of. He is, man. And Shaq <laughs> starts laughing. He's like, damn, Ernie, I can't lie. I lied to those two, but you're the godfather. Yeah, you caught me. Oh, God, it was so funny, dude. Those guys, every time I watch them, they're good. They are so good. I enjoy them. I, 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 great I really. I, I, I never know when they're on, but if I flip on it and I see them, I'll sit there and watch them. They're I got great. back on board when the Hawks made their playoff run last yeah, year because yeah. I was watching a lot then. And, yeah, yeah. They're, they're fantastic. And, you know, this year the Hawks aren't making any kind of playoff run. So I've, I've, I've lost my gusto for the NBA. I mean, my God, the Hawks lost again last night. They're four and eight. I thought they were positioned to become really good. Meanwhile, you two knuckleheads, basketball teams are overperforming, and I remember how much fun that is. So I'm a little bitter about that. Yeah, we're rolling right now. I'm not going to lie. All right, uh, Hick, I'm, I'm shocked by one thing in the poll, and I heard what you said before. That mm-hmm. just shows the hypocrisy within their own group. Yeah. That they have Oregon over Ohio State because they beat them head-to-head. Yeah. But they have Michigan over Michigan State because their loss was better than Michigan yeah. State's. Meanwhile, Oregon lost to unranked Stanford. They didn't hold that same standard. No. So that's a joke. But we're far enough into the season now. In the meantime, Oklahoma at 9-0 and that's sits, what, sits in the 8-hole. That, that's, that's my beef, right? Yeah. At this stage. We're we're far enough into the season now that Oklahoma at nine and zero, so would and you a take ske- in a schedule strength that's rated much higher than Cincinnati at nine and zero? How can they be behind Cincinnati? Right, right. right. There's just I, it's nonsensical. Now, o- listen, it's Does almost Oklahoma a- play at Oklahoma State. Yes, and they play at Baylor this weekend. Yeah, but it's just it's almost like the committee is well, like uh, uh, erroneously was listening to me. When I was just pounding, I'm not inviting Oklahoma back. I'm not inviting Oklahoma back. Yeah. And now I'm going to have to be the Oklahoma booster when it comes to comparing like situations. Yeah, the AP top 25, Oklahoma's fourth. Right. It just, it just again, but I'm the not. The only poll that matters. And you can hold them to a standard. If you, you know, you lose one game, you're gone. But at this nine games in, 
you know, the win over Texas, and they've got other well, wins. This is where you start to right the wrong if you're the committee, and you move Oklahoma up to six behind Cincinnati, but ahead of Michigan and right. Michigan State. But they still haven't put them ahead of Michigan and Michigan State. If Oklahoma played Michigan and Michigan State, I think Oklahoma had every chance to win the sure, game. Sure, of course. So, so it's just straight. That one is is – now look, that could change. They play at Baylor, 13th ranked this weekend. If they go 10 and 0 and they pick up another top 25 win, and Cincinnati's 10 and 0 and they have one top 25 win, that's what they're going to finish with because it'll be the only top 25 team they play. Then I also it, don't understand why UTSA can't get more love as they make their debut in the poll. Yeah, they're nine and 0. Shouts to the Roadrunners. Texas San Antonio, once coached by Larry Coker, 23rd overall. Not until they got rid of him though. Me, me. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, Schedule yeah, you can you, is, uh... you can play around with this poll all you want. I mean, look, Alabama was unimpressive. I mean, they're sitting there at, I, yeah, in the no, two. I, I couldn't agree. The only team that looks infinitely impressive every time out is Georgia. Yep. Every I mean, time. every week out, they they are dominant. And however you want to rationalize, they get there. Yeah. If you play Georgia, my advice to you is you need to get ahead of them. You need to get ahead of them. You need a couple plays to go your way. You need to get up like fourteen to nothing. And sort of make them get out of their comfort zone, and if and that might be the only chance you have at beating Georgia because they're they're really good, and it's all like I said, I said this four weeks ago. It's gift wrapped for them, and they're just going through the motions now. You know, I was talking to Charlton yesterday, and about Tennessee plays Georgia this week, and you know, of course, he has these dreams, and I said, look, bro, you ain't beating them. I said, but you have the type of team on offense if you could stick a play here, hit a play there. Because that's what they try to do if you could get up on them. But your defense gave up 42 to Kentucky. 38 to Florida. Yeah, you're right. not, you're not, you know, you just, you don't I have say enough. Georgia to me is still, if I'm Georgia fan, the one thing that I'm worried about is I haven't been tested yet. I haven't right. played a team that's capable of being. Well, when me. are you going to get tested? Not till the college football yeah, playoff. Yeah, my point is, you knows, I don't know how they would stack up against, say, an Alabama this, or an Ohio now, State. Now, you, they, you would like this. Because Florida's down and, they, and Clemson was down. You would like this as a person who doesn't want Georgia to win it all. If the playoff started today, it'd be Georgia, Ohio right. State, Alabama, Oregon. Advantage Alabama. Big time. Even though Oregon beat Ohio State. Yeah, but Alabama, Georgia, that's bound to, that's not going to stay that way. It's but if impossible. Georgia has to beat Right, but if Georgia had to beat Ohio State and say in Alabama again, it'd be, it'd be, you got to tip your cap to them. Then they've done one hundred percent. Because and remember, I, and, they L- might, and they might do it. When they look LSU, like the best team. when LSU won its natty, yeah, they, they beat, killed everybody. They beat everybody. No, but, they beat I like mean, they beat, seven top ten teams. Yeah, they beat two, three, four, yeah, they five, beat them all. six. Yeah. They beat them all. Right. You know, Georgia. Who have they played? So no far? one. Florida and Clemson are down. Those right. are the two marquee games on their schedule, and it just so happens that not one, but both of those teams are way under. Under below average this year. Speaking of Florida, I was thinking about this. You know, everybody always says, "Well, who are you going to get? Who are you going to get?" It, yes. For what it's, I, yeah. I, I wanted to look at that LSU schedule as you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, they beat uh, week two. They beat number nine Texas. Yeah. Uh, week six they beat number seven Florida. Yep. Week eight they beat number nine Auburn. Yep. They followed that up with number two Alabama. Yep. And they went bang, bang, bang. The final three weeks, four, four, three. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was unbelievable. It's the greatest. And by the way, incredible. greatest season in college football history. And beat the heck out of everybody. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. But I was thinking about this, um, you know, when you talk about, you know, Mullen, whether he makes it or doesn't make it, we all think he's going to be back next year. But it would behoove the program if he is. That's that's what would be best for the program, that this is a one-year hitch right. and but, we can keep some yeah. continuity. Yeah, but he's got to do a lot better. And I'm not sure that he can, but that, I'm not, that's all I'm here to debate. We say, well, who are you going to get? Who are you going to get, right? Right. And so, you know, I, I, I think about it, and I threw you three names. I threw you uh, – you know, guys who aren't you know, the Oregon guy, Mario Cristobal is not coming, Lane Kiffin, uh, Jeff Brom. Those are the three names that I threw out. None of whom are, are as accomplished as Dan Mullen in their history. None of them have had won the Orange Bowl. And, uh, and Mario and, Cristobal might be. Didn't he get to Oregon to number one? I don't know. He's, no, he's, I don't think he's, he's close. Well, I, I, he hasn't been coaching as long. Right. But, huh? No? Yeah. I, well, I don't think he is, but uh-huh. he could be. I mean, he's had a power program, and he's in good shape now. But Yeah. He is. But anyway, so I, so I was thinking about it. and um, Yeah, Crystal Ball won a Rose Bowl, lost a Fiesta Bowl, and this year. So, yeah, you're right. Uh, but anyway, so I was thinking, oh, you know, because one of the things we always talk about is, well, who is good? Who's a good college coach, you know? You got no, I, I think Saban is the – I can give, I can give you a bunch of good college coaches. I think great is the question. Okay, great. That's what I mean. That's a hard one. Whatever word I that use. That to me, for now – Elite. Elite. You, you can only, to me, mm-hmm. put, put 
right now Saban and Dabo in that category. And if you're Dabo, are you at the point now where, hey, might be a good time to bolt Clemson. I've done everything I, I can know. do here. Yeah, that, that I would know. You it know? depends on what he wants to do. It wouldn't make sense to bolt to another college. Well, he Alabama. Well, Alabama's got a, a good coach in yeah. place who's not going anywhere oh, soon. Of course. But anyway, so I, so, so I was thinking about this. So here are a couple more names. Let's see what your, your reaction is. Okay. Um, but I was thinking, what about a guy like Kyle Shanahan after he gets deposed in San Fran? Well, again, pro coaches don't go to college unless they're Once in a fired. while they do. Well, yeah. They got to get fired. Not successful yeah. ones. And he went to the Super Bowl, so yeah. he will be a successful one. Yeah. I was just saying, Kyle Shanahan. What about a guy like uh, Gus Bradley? You know? I, I, and again, if that's something they well, we've heard that about Jack Del Rio. Yeah, you find a lot of times that these pro guys they don't like stepping down unless they're just. I get it. You got to yeah. love the the whole. The first thing you would have to ask those guys is, you know, what do you know about recruiting? How do you again, keeping in mind that the college football coaches, more so, and not just the head coaches, the assistants. A lot of those guys are going to end up going to the NFL because college football right now is a gigantic pain in the rear end. You got to recruit. Your own players, every day, you got to recruit, re-recruit them. You got to recruit the high school kids, and you got to recruit the portal. It's it's insane how it works. It's insane. It's too much. So, but anyway, those are a couple of names that I was also thinking about uh, going forward. Like again, out of the box type people. Uh, and again, just getting ahead of the story, but throwing it out there for you uh, because that's how my brain works, Jeff Prosser. That's. How it works. All right, Jaguars get the Colts. Let's t- uh, kick off the 8 o'clock hour with uh, some. Brian Schottenheimer here on the Jag staff would make sense in games where he played there. He knows the there you state. Go. So if you're going to get in the, and, and a guy like that, you can pluck. Mm-hmm. I will stand by. Successful pro coaches don't go back to college. Stop sending me guys that got fired. Jim Harbaugh doesn't count. Jim Harbaugh went back to his alma mater after he got, you know, almost blackballed from the NFL because he was so hard to deal with, right? Mm-hmm. Wasn't that your impression? Let go, or or they agrees to split with the 49ers. The rest of the NFL didn't come banging on Jim Harbaugh's door to come be their coach when he went to Michigan. Right. 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 So, no yeah, question about different. it. All right. Uh, beef caller number four. Four. It's 641 They're coveted. They're gold. They're JT tickets. Hells yes. Yes. It's uh, a relaxing evening in the... In the arena. In the arena. Yeah. Are you going four. to that one, Nick? That sounds like... Well, I'd like to, but... I- BWR didn't show much excitement, but I would love to go. That's, That's too bad. Uh, call it for right now, 641-1010. Going to get a pair of tickets to go see James Taylor Saturday night with his all-star band at the Vice Star Veterans Memorial Arena. It's a 730 show. Boom. Karen, she's a silver sun.